Alrighty, welcome back, one and all, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am, of course, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to dive back into jam Game Jam coverage with the Cyberpunk Game Jam for 2014. And this is obviously a little bit different than our previous Flappy Jam. I mean, obviously it's Cyberpunk, um, but we have a smaller window of opportunity. Well, the Flappy Jam was about a month long, you can just enter when you felt comfortable. This one, um hit up in March and you have until March 10th to make your submissions and as of this uh, recording you have two days seven hours 18 minutes and 42 seconds to go about entering your game and according to the podcast on the front page of it you have until midnight um, Eastern Standard Time I believe to make your submission but I don't lead down to the wire because you might run into a problem get it in there Get your delicious games in there. I've played a bunch of really cool ones so far. Even some that are not supposedly going to get entered, but I'm going to share them anyway if I find them. There is no escape. They're awesome. You guys are going to get recognition for that. Um, so what makes the Cyberpunk Game Jam a Cyberpunk Game Jam besides really crazy neon colors and a weird dystopic future? Well, Cyberpunk is uh, a little bit different than your average fancy future, whereas it usually hampers in, like, there's this huge massive class differentiation there's almost like the stratification of society and there's like these criminal under underpinnings of the world that are very sophisticated technology wise yet they kind of live on the fringes of society and they hack things and they do a lot of really sophisticated cyber crime to try and like get some money stay alive maybe get some crazy like super drug from the future that juices your veins and makes you see like magic sprite pixies everywhere um, so that's sort of a, a general idea of what a cyberpunk sort of thing is. You could think of it as like, you know, what is it? I can't even remember. Blade Runner, that's the one. It's kind of like Blade Runner. It's just weird dystopic future. There's people on the edges of society who can barely read, but they can use a computer. Um, and so, now that we have established what cyberpunk is, your sort of theme, sort of anchor is a picture here provided by Debbie Ever that shows two, you know, sort of like neo crazy mosh pit guys jumping off a building and they're probably going to have to go battle and hack into some evil future corporation that's trying to take over some sort of market and oust some homeless folks from their homes and they're jumping off and they're going to go do stuff. It's very neon. There's a lot of bright purples and some reds at the bottom and some greens and blues. So as you can see, like, a good baseline is nice neon color palette. You know, it, it barely skims and kind of hits that line of potentially causing an epileptic seizure. And that's a good part, place to start. So, after you've submitted your game, we have from March 11th through the 24th to get in and make your votes, play the games, check it out. And so here's how you're going to be judging the games for the Cyberpunk Game Jam, based on a lovely little acronym called ARPS, which is simply Aesthetics, Relevance, Polish, and Synergy. So starting off, Aesthetics. Is it nice artwork? I mean, even if it's not like the coup de gras, like most elite best artwork you've ever seen, did they spend enough time with it? Does it flow nicely with the game? Does it fit sort of with the cyberpunk aesthetic? Does the sound work nicely? Does the sound effects play at the right time? Are they appropriate? Or is it just a baby screaming every time you kick a bottle? And then we've got relevance. Does it fit the theme? I mean, I saw this a lot in Flappy Jam where I, like, I played a game that was on the page, but I wasn't entirely certain whether or not it was actually a Flappy Bird game or not, and I couldn't really tell you what it was based off of. And then we've got Polish. Is the game finished, like, or is it janky? Do you jump and, like, flames shoot out that aren't supposed to be there, or do you shoot your gun and, like, your legs fall off? You know, weird things like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be, like polished to AAA standards, but it, you know, it needs to run, it needs to work, and people need to be able to get it to run. Obviously, I do if I want to record it. And then, of course, we have Synergy. How the whole big mishmash fits together, and is the complete package awesome, or is it sort of, like, mostly awesome? 
And those are things to keep in mind when you're judging these during the March 11th through 24th. And it looks like I was wrong, it was Pacific Standard Time for the entry, so you have until midnight on the 10th Pacific Standard Time to make your entries. And of course, this whole thing is hosted by Devi Ever, who is a indie who hangs out and does stuff on itch.io. According to her podcast, she hasn't really been on the indie scene that long, and well, neither have I, um, for that matter. So she was nice enough to set up this whole game jam, and she has a very lovely podcast that talks about what she hopes to do with this and benefit the sort of indie scene on the whole for game development. You should definitely give that a listen. It's interesting and definitely spot on for some of the stuff that I've seen going on in the indie community, and that's just from the YouTube side of things. So let's just jump in to five random picks from the Cyberpunk Game Jam submission so far. I have no prerequisite for these first five other than for the initial wave, they all have to run in the web browser. But don't you worry, Windows and Mac and Linux folks, I will hit your games next. If you're only running Linux, a very specific version of Linux, maybe not, but definitely Windows and Mac, I have both of those, will hit you. But let's just jump right into Down.Load by Jay Townsend. This is a very nice game. Um, it's very minimalist. I love minimalist games. You know, you can just jump right in. It takes like two seconds to figure out what you're doing, and you can just get right down to it. You're diving down into what I guess is like this pool of digital goo, and you've got to get down to the bottom and hack a mega corporation in the future who's trying to re- rebrand ethanol or something evil. I don't know what what's evil with ethanol, but a- anyway. So you jump down, and you've got two enemies to look out for. You've got these cybernetic jellyfish that you just shoot, and they explode. And then you've got these glowy, flickery skulls that you can't shoot, but will still kill you. And you've got to avoid them. I'm going to say they're, they're kind of like the viruses. They're going to get into your brain and murgle you. And so your point system is based upon how many enemies you shoot and how deep you end up getting in this pit of, you know, digigoop this wellspring of internet justice, and eventually, you know, as you go, the game spawns more and more enemies, you gotta be more and more careful, because the only thing you can directly control is your character's side-to-side motion with your mouse. Otherwise, the gunshots, like your your little laser shooties down down below you, those just kinda go at their own pace, you can't directly control that. Um, I definitely like it. I feel it fits the Cyberpunk Jam really well. It's got a very consistent color palette. It's very bright and neon. Um, The controls are very simple and they work very simplistically. And um, as long as it's very clear that, like, if it is hacking that's happening, definitely fits with the Cyberpunk appeal. Um, Next up is Hunter by Siactro. And this, this is a really great game. It's got a fancy intro, and like, right off the bat, I was just like, is this like Jazz Punk meets Blade Runner? Mm -hmm, Wait for, I don't know. And so, it's got a really great song in the background. Very reminiscent of like, the age when Blade Runner was doing its thing. And so your goal of this game is to get in there, and there's an evil android on the loose, and you gotta hunt him through these crowds of people, and you gotta kill him. So, it took me a while at first to even figure out what the android looked like um, because there's a lot of people in the crowd that I just started gunning down that had like a little android eyeball. But, um, I mean, look at this town. It's got little signposts. It's like Neo Tokyo um, everywhere. It's like, oh, cheap porn, um, pizza, um, something I can't read, um, the Najo Slotch Banjo Show. And then eventually I did figure out that when you first load in and you see in the very back row of people, there's a guy with blonde hair roaming around, very bright blonde hair, he's slightly taller than everybody, and he's the android you gotta kill. And I never quite got to killing him. Um, He's really fast, um, even sprinting with the shift key and burning my energy. I just couldn't quite catch up to him, but I got really close a few times. Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily... know if you need to make it easier. I had a really hard time just getting to see him in the, like, the back of his head as he was running from me. But it's pretty good. Um, overall, the aesthetic is really nice. Obviously, the graphics are very minimalist, but that, that doesn't hamper this game at all. Um, there's great signs. It's very neon. You get this cyberpunk sort of feeling from the notion of like an android on the loose doing evil stuff. Um, 
the, the soundtrack is very Blade Runner-y, and I almost say like that is the reference for this game, is Blade Runner. You're hunting the Blade Runner android through the streets of blocky, sort of jazz-punky people, and trying not to get murgled. He doesn't actually attack you, but you've only got ten shots, so make him count. I ended up with way too many dead civilians, which made you running around really difficult. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is there's a lot of people roaming through the street. I understand it's supposed to make movement very difficult, but mostly I get a very claustrophobic feeling. Also, Doctor Who. Um, still pretty good. Really liked it. Um, check it out for yourself. The links are in the description. And then next we have NabokOS.exe by Giorgio Malvone. Macone? Mal Malvone. Um, this is a puzzle game. Sort of think of yourself as someone who's been digitized into the Matrix, sort of. And you've got to sort of align these brown chunkets of data with these inputs in order to progress to the next level. And each one is um, a different variety of brain teaser. You have to uh, tackle these chunkets and you can you have to deal with more than one at a time, often is not, so that you can get like two inputs next to each other to click in. Um, I had a hell of a time with this first one. The second one and the third one went pretty well. Um, there's not a lot of soundtrack to be said for it, and the art style is very minimalist, but I like it. It's it's a really strong brain teaser, and I, I do enjoy a good brain teaser periodically, and this has definitely got the hallmarks of one. Some of these just confused me forever, then suddenly, click, and that's really the hallmark of a, a good brain teaser game. Other than the fact that you might be in a computer and when you do complete a level there is this sort of like code logic displayed on the screen, that's about the only references that I can directly pick up for like a cyberpunk feel, but it's still a pretty good game on the whole. After that we've got Slider Emma by Cabazetta. Cabazota? Cabazota. Um, this one's, I mean obviously it feels very cyberpunk, we've got robot policemen. Um, your goal is to slide down these hills, um, almost kind of like you're sliding in, say, Mirror's Edge was my first thought. And then you've got to jump over them, and as you jump you can shoot down and get points by shooting the police, and then you got to avoid um, these little rounds of electricity on the ground. The only thing, like, the art's pretty strong, um, the cops don't really to move around too much, so they're not too much of a challenge. The only thing that bo that I really had a hard time was was controlling the jumps, mostly because you gotta like I'm not certain if you have to double jump like you double tap your arrow or if you just hold the arrow really hard to get them to do like the really big jump over and through stuff because it can be kind of hard to both jump a large gap and to jump through like a narrow gap between a couple little pillars of electricity in certain areas. On the whole, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, there's just something about controlling the jumps that I just didn't like. Um, if they can fix that, that'd be perfect. And then you could definitely get like a nice train of killing robots going. Not sure what the heat stat is doing, but still pretty strong. Good sound effects, good background. Well, background's very simple, but good artwork on the whole. Um, and then the last, but not least, is Neon City Runner by tastes like future games and this is definitely like I feel like this is a very old school mirror's edge um, your goal is you're running through this city on the tops of skyscrapers and it's very neon and it's you know if you play it too long I'm sure it'll make your eyes kind of spin in circles and maybe flicker a little bit um, you gotta run into the distance over obstacles on top of buildings around jumps onto little tiny little walkway ramps and you can jump through these loops to get the power up and make sure you go fast. I only got a few of those because the speed can actually really screw up my pacing for jumping. And I'll overshoot a lot. I did that quite a few times. Um, and you've got these crazy, like, giant blow-up balloon holograms everywhere trying to get all up in your biz with their hands and their faces. And then you've got, like, searchlights from the police. And you're just running along and you got to get to the end, to the beacon, so that you can get to safety and go up to the next level. Um, I got to level 3, and that's about as far as I got. Some of the jumping can be a little hard. Um, the physics and like the environment really can kind of warp your vision a little bit, because the perspective is a little funky, but I like it. It's got a great, I mean obviously it's all very neon, but it's got a great sort of sense of running and distance and movement and jumping 
And you jump pretty far for, uh, you know, a techno-human hacker from the future. Um, other than feeling from the future, I'm not sure how cyberpunk you might consider it. But it definitely has, like, that feel of Mirror's Edge where you're, like, trying to steal a piece of information and take it to the drop point for your client, who's probably some other mega corporation paying you to hack another mega corporation. But I like it. It's very simple. It's got a good atmosphere, good sound. And um, that's about all for right now. So in the, in the next few days, and definitely during uh, March 11th through the 24th, I'll definitely be doing more of these, probably in chunks of 10, 5 to 10, depending on how many entries. We have 25 right now, as I'm sure you saw from the opening page. Um, if you have one that you're not submitting and you see this video, um, drop me a line. I want to show everyone's games. Doesn't matter if they enter up and end up in the cyberpunk jam. If you have a game and it's even just loosely related to cyberpunk, I just submit it. I mean, people it, it get people to play it. People check it out. I'll definitely see it. Um, but if not, definitely drop me a line. I'd still love to play your game and put it in one of these showcases. We'll do like the unsung heroes of the cyberpunk genre or something that sort of like hit at the periphery and kind of do their own thing. Um, other than that, um, I'm definitely going to see about doing an interview about um, the process behind the game development from whoever ends up winning the Cyberpunk Jam at the end of all this, whoever gets like the number one number of votes as sort of like my prize to them. They can talk about their process and how they developed the game. And um, who knows, maybe I'll even, we can do like a podcast with Debbie ever. I'll, I'll see if she's interested in doing that. We can do a little video conference or something. Seems like she's moving, so she's probably gonna be busy during this whole situation. But as for everyone else, keep making games. We've only got 24 or so, or 25 so far. We got two days and seven hours left. Let's do it. And otherwise, I've been Larry the Trooper Cobra. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, especially if you made one of these games and had something to say about it. And I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.